okay? There is no other profession that gives you the freedom to earn virtually an unlimited income. Now, when I grew up back in the days, we used to look at the Huxtables. That was Bill Cosby and his wife, Claire. And, you know, Cliff Huxtable was the doctor and Miss Huxtable was the lawyer. And they lived in a beautiful brownstone home. We just automatically translated success to being a doctor or a lawyer. And they can make very good pay, six, seven figure incomes. But salespeople can do even better. Learn the number one asset in business and life, and that's persuasion. Think about it for a second. If you have any kids, you have to persuade your child to go take a bath. You have to persuade them to do their work, their homework. You have to persuade them to brush their teeth. If you're a business owner, you're going to have to persuade the landlord to give you a better deal on that space. You're going to have to persuade the buyer to want to go with your company instead of another company. You're going to have to persuade that male or female to want to date you or even marry you. Persuasion is a part of life. It is psychology. It is... I'm going to go into the next slide and show you what's going on. So I recently pulled this article by the Harvard Business Review which said more universities need to teach sales, right? So what they came up, the research that they came up with is that more than 50% of U.S. college graduates, regardless of their majors, are likely to work in sales at some point. And studies show that jobs in sales are among the highest in career lifetime value. The economy, the U.S. economy spends over $900 billion a year in just training strategies and execution and development of their salespeople. $900 billion. That's nothing to sneeze at. So if you're thinking about, hey, is sales a good career for me to get into? Or if I'm an entrepreneur, should I learn sales? The answer is yes. So let's go into the topic at hand. The top three things people get wrong when selling. Rule number one, never make assumptions. Never assume the customer won't buy a product or service based on your personal buying habits. Just because you wouldn't buy a Ferrari doesn't mean that customer or client won't buy a Ferrari. Just because you don't like mayonnaise doesn't mean that client or customer won't buy mayo. Do not make that assumption. Rule number two.